Hi, welcome to the Sawblade 666 YouTube channel. I'm Daniel Sawblade. And I'm Cartoon Ryan. Today we're going to talk about breaking into the comic book industry by Kamiko Comics. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so Breaking In to the Comic Industry by Comico, Kamiko. I'm not sure. I think it's Kamiko because <laughs> I, I have no idea. Because I heard the, well, I, I, I used to say Comico. I, I, I never, I knew about this, this company back in the day, but I never picked up their books. And I recently heard the, the cartoonist kayfabe guys say Kamiko. So mm. I'm kind of going with that now. Okay. Anyway, regardless, they were a, a small comic book company in the 80s and, and 90s. They they stopped publishing stuff, I think, in the late 90s, which is when this came out. This is a little artifact here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and I just wanted to, to go back and look, take a look at, at a, a time capsule piece of the very last of... of of how it was on on how to get in and and it's funny because this was put out at a time when the comics industry was actually kind of going belly up yeah uh because of the speculator boom and all the crash and oh yeah the the distributors pulling out and marvel going bankrupt and and this, that, and the other, but it was still, um, in some ways, as a creator, it was there. There was a still a viable way to to make money if you wanted to. Yeah. So this is 1997. Okay. When this was put out, I was 22 years old, <laughs> and. At, still at that time, basically that whole decade, I was trying to figure out a way to become a cartoonist, professional comic book artist, whatever I could get my hands on. And I just wanted to show this because before the internet was really a thing, you had to go find stuff like this for information. Even in 1997, you, yeah, you could get online. I mean, I wasn't online in 1997. And I would say most people weren't. No, most people were still reading books. Mm. You had to get your information by just finding it yeah. via printed matter. So I don't remember how I got this. I'm looking at the price on it and it says 495 US that Jeez, that's man. kind of a lot yeah in the 90s yeah you know I wasn't paying I mean full-blown comp you know a uh, uh, mainstream comic wasn't 495 no, no they were barely like two bucks back then but this is uh <clears throat> this isn't a comic this is a guide this is some information on what you should do to not only get into this company, which wasn't a major company, but they were major enough to um, publish some stuff that was known. They're known. They're, uh, I was telling, uh, we were just talking earlier before we started filming. They were known for uh, a book called Grendel, which was, re which was created by some dude. Uh, uh, I think the artist's name was Matt Wagner. Yeah, that had to be their most popular property, I would imagine. Well, they had license to stuff like Robotech. Oh, okay. Which they also did. And um, a couple other things. Like I said, I they weren't uh, quite on my radar. I don't remember how I got this. I think that it may have been I could have ordered it. I could have been at a convention and got it. Um Back then, I was trying to get anything I could get my hands on, on how to submit things, what to submit, mm -hmm. um, you know, anything. Another book we'll probably end up talking about that's very similar to this pamphlet or this uh, 
th this book here is uh, getting into the business of comics, <laughs> which is a you know thicker mm. paperback, but um, another '90s artifact. But anyway, we're not going to go through all of this. I just wanted to to show the format and show you know kind of what they're talking about uh, as far as um, what's expected. You know, they kind of go briefly through um, how to construct a plot, plot synopsis, character sketches, uh, character development, briefly, you know, how to lay out your pages, uh, how, to, how to write a script for a comic, you know, what's expected of a writer. Um, they go into penciling a little bit. Um, I'm not a computer guy, but they do briefly mention what's used for, um, you know, the, the specific things for coloring comics on the computer, which I'm sure that, uh, well, that's when it took off was yeah, the mid to late nineties. Right. But, but it would be dated mm -hmm. now. Oh yeah. This time. whole thing is dated. Yeah, this it, is it, not, you know. I don't know how you do it now. Yeah. I, I don't at all. But um, here they're kind of going into uh, breakdowns on pages. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's just interesting that uh, also something else I wanted to to uh, they they also talk about inking in here, which I thought. You know, they briefly mention uh, the possibility of digital inking, <laughs> which that's like a complete thing now. Back yeah. then it was, you know, just just uh, kind of, you know, maybe that'll happen. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know? there weren't any like major... I mean, there wasn't anything like Clip Studio or Procreate, things like that. So here they're talking about, you know... Photoshop didn't really have those tools yet. You, you need tech pens, a brush, and, and ink, and zip and I mean, mm -hmm. they're talking about all the old school yeah. shit still. Uh -huh. um, but one thing I wanted to mention about this format here, and they talk about it in this book also, this format was called an ash can. And independent creators up to professional major companies would do small promotional book small prints uh print runs in the small format promoting their comics or if you had an idea you would make what's called an ash can um and it was just a way to get your your comic out or your idea or to pitch to an editor mm. or submit kind of a promo thing it was like a media kit almost and it falls in line with you know mini comic zine you know i've made zines this size it's just eight and a half by 11 folded folded in half yeah. so um but anyway they they talk about it here um uh, Ash can layout. See, they even show you how to make this actual book. Hmm. I would pour over this thing, you know, just to kind of rough out how I would lay out things. And to this day, this is how I do it. Hmm. You know, I've actually printed my stuff this way, you know. Um, but anyway, it it's just it, one thing I wanted to point out, too. They get into coloring. Mm -hmm. And this was the part where I was talking about how they were talking, you know, they're kind of briefly talking shop about digital stuff like Adobe and Illustrator and Fractal Painter. Painter, I've never heard mm -hmm. of that one, but uh, that's amazing. Illustrator was being used back then. Isn't that funny? I didn't know that. Yeah, but Illustrator is old. I think it. But have you heard of Fractal Painter? No, I've never heard of that. Not at all. Expressions. Expressions and many, many more. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, hey, I'm not digital, so I'm still kind of in this world as far as yeah. creating my own work. 
But one thing they mention up here, Dr. Martin dies. Yeah. I still have my set over there that's... Uh, are they still good, you think? Yeah. Oh, they are? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's, hmm. they're still... They're, you know, you can use them. Uh, they're very bright, just intense, um, uh, saturated color. Yeah. The ink, you know, it's just colored ink. Mm -hmm. And um, they would, uh, back in the day, use those as like their, their color guides. Yeah. You know, you would, you would Xerox the inks. And then you do these dyes over the Xerox, and then you take that to the colorist, and then they would do the color separations, I guess, and then it would go get printed. I, I don't know all the ins and outs. Uh, the cartoonist kayfabe guys, man, they can cover that to a T, though. I yeah. mean, they they, uh, they they really cover it. But... Uh, They would make actual um, plates from the color guides, so that that goes into some older printing techniques that uh, just aren't used anymore. Not at all. But uh, anyway, I just thought I would share this because, as a young artist, I, you know, yeah. That's a time capsule piece right there. Yeah, artifact. Yeah, goes into lettering, talks about mm -hmm. lettering, what you need for that. This, di you know, um, they briefly mention maybe using some um, programs for lettering <laughs> in, in this. They mention uh, Quark Express. Yeah, yeah, I never <laughs> use Quark. I, I, I don't even know if they still have that anymore. And then I don't uh, hear about it anymore. Something called uh, Photoshop. Uh, I guess Photoshop and uh, Illustrator. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's mm. talking about. Uh, and then here's here's a a long ass thing for lettering. Mm. Basically, you just uh, photocopy that and put it underneath your page and practice or something. But anyway, uh, there's, uh, let's see, there's, uh, oh, this is another thing I wanted to talk about. This is a submissions checklist. <laughs> so it's telling you, you know, what you need or what's expected. Um, they want you to send copies of original art, your name on every page, every page copyrighted in your name. Mm. That's weird. Resume, <laughs> work in oh. school experience, and a cover letter. Oh, Self-addressed uh, stamp envelope for return. Uh, yeah. Thought that I've actually submitted pages and had labels made with my address and name on the back of each page, which I thought somebody else requested that when mm. I. And then it goes into like a a little materials list, and I think back in the day I looked this over and tried to get it all, man. You know. Uh, <laughs> So, but anyway, apparently this company had a little thing you could buy where it offered a lot of these supplies or something, huh. like a tryout thing. A tryout Try kit? Yeah, <laughs> which is interesting. Wow. Hmm. But anyway, uh, and here's a little ad for some kind of audition uh, thing yeah you get mega cool tips book breaking in which i guess this is this thing and then five guided boards for your own concepts and pages <laughs> oh you get a free non-photo blue pencil oh. ten dollars in free comics 
an in-depth critique of your work by a comic company professional. Their review is guaranteed. And then you would, I guess, just either send here for additional info or look, you can email them. At (laughs) AOL.com. Jeez. And that is dated. Oh, yeah. Dated. Well, well, it's almost 30. Well. Getting close to 30 years. Getting close to 30 years. Wild, man. Time flies. (laughs) Yeah, it does. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that little blast from the past. And, uh. Yeah, and if you guys, uh, you know, were around back then, any you guys? Yeah, comment. Yeah, if comment. you know about this book, uh, yeah. I, I recently had a look on eBay to see if this thing was available, and there's a lot of them oh, on there. I bet. I bet. <laughs> and, and still at the same price, wow, which I thought hilarious. was funny. But, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Ryan. If, if anybody out there knows about this book or has it or tried the actual book, uh, submissions guide tell your submission story in the comments yeah absolutely and then you know hit hit like and subscribe if you liked what we did and then uh check us out on thursdays at uh 7 p.m central we do we're here every thursday yeah live draw drawing uh live stream 7 p.m central we just hang out and chat and draw yep cool see ya